Let's talk about becoming a pen tester. This is actually the most common question I get anytime I do any sort of public speaking. How do you become a pen tester? So today I want to talk to you about the different career routes that you've got, different ways of getting into the industry, into a penetration testing role, and also hopefully leave you just with some hints and tips for things that might be worth mentioning during interviews or during discussions with recruiters and hiring managers, that kind of thing. I've actually been a hiring manager for pen testers for many years now. So whilst a lot of this is just my opinions and my experience, Hopefully it's something worth thinking about and something that can help you out. Uh, the first thing though, and the big thing really is, there is no single route into pen testing. And you'll have uh, a lot of different people with a lot of different experiences with what worked for them and what didn't work for them. But that's a good thing. It means that if there is a certain route that doesn't appeal to you, like maybe you're not academically focused and you don't want to go to university, there's still options available for you if you want to get into pen testing. Um, you don't need a degree to get into pen testing and you don't need a degree to work as a pen tester. No doubt you'll meet a lot of people who don't have a degree in a pen testing or computer science related uh, field. Maybe they don't have a degree at all or they've got something unrelated and that works for a lot of people. The truth is there still are a lot of companies out there who have the um, old school re requirements of you must have a degree to apply. And while sometimes through um, experience and um, demonstrating practical capability, you can get around some of those requirements, there are companies that do list that as a requirement. So getting a degree can be useful, but it's not required. If you are looking at degrees though, you've got a couple of different options. You could do something direct, like get an undergrad degree in ethical hacking. Those are available now. Or you could do something a little bit broader. So something like a undergrad degree in computer science and then a master's degree in information security, something like that. So if you're academically focused, if that's on your list of goals, you want to get a degree, or if you think that's just something that's going to work well for you, that is an option. If you're not, on the other hand, you, you don't think university will work well for you, or there's just other life circumstances that say the academic route isn't the good choice for you, then like I say, you don't need a degree. There are companies out there that hire pen testers without even asking or particularly caring if they have a degree. So there's a few different ways you can get in through those routes as well. But the big one really would be looking at roles that you can move into a cybersecurity role from. That could be something like a generic IT help desk role. Whilst help desk work is often very frustrating, one of the benefits of it is it'll give you broad experience of different kinds of technologies, different kinds of computer users, different kinds of customers, and uh, also different ways of setting systems up. That broad experience will definitely help you when it comes to uh, cybersecurity in general, but specifically pen testing. So you could do something like help desk and then move into a security role, or you could look at something like network engineering or software development and then move into security roles from there. The specifics will probably depend on what kind of pen testing you're most interested in. Some people uh, like myself, for example, are quite broad and will do infrastructure testing and web application testing and cloud testing and all different kinds of things. Whereas other people prefer to specialize early on and maybe web application pen testing is the thing that interests you the most. So you might want those earlier roles or that earlier experience to push you in that direction and doing something like software development, developing uh, web applications is going to help you in that way. You could, of course, uh, have a career change and come into pen testing from something completely unrelated. For example, there are boot camps out there that will run you through uh, the foundational skills for cybersecurity, and those have worked well for some people. So it doesn't matter where you are in your career or the path that you want to take, be it academic or practical or certification-based, there's definitely an option out there for you. That is a good thing. When it comes to actually applying for jobs though, so at the end of your degree or at the end of your boot camp or after you've done a few years on the help desk, one of the things that you might struggle with is um, a requirement for professional experience. And the truth is there are companies out there that list so-called entry-level positions that require three or even five years experience. And whilst that's silly and we'll laugh at them for that, that isn't every role. So don't be put off if you see companies listing silly requirements like that. Also, bear in mind that whilst you wouldn't have professional experience of working as a pen tester, you might have an awful lot of experience, regardless of whether you came in academically or through something like independent learning, that is useful and is worth highlighting either in the CV or certainly in an interview. 
for example, um, when you work on help desk, you're very likely to have to explain technical matters to non-technical people or specialist technical issues to technical people who aren't a specialist in that specific field. And this is something that comes up all the time as a penetration tester. If you find a vulnerability, you'll have to explain that vulnerability either to technical specialists like software developers who are going to fix the issue or business executives who need to understand the business risk. So that ability to communicate clearly technical matters is something that you can get experience in without working as a pen tester. Another thing is a lot of companies don't necessarily care if your experience came from professionally working as a pen tester or if it came from independent learning, as long as you can demonstrate those practical skills. So there's platforms out there that allow you to learn those skills, practice those technical skills, discovering vulnerabilities, exploiting vulnerabilities, and even in some instances, writing them up and explaining them to others. That would be just fine to demonstrate those kinds of practical capabilities that we'd want to see in an interview or on a CV. Um, that could be something like bug bounties, where you are, in fact, effectively reporting to a company's security vulnerabilities. But even separate to that, just things like uh, installing intentionally vulnerable virtual machines on your device and then finding vulnerabilities on those virtual machines. Either just running outdated software and uh, performing the penetration testing methodology as we would on a pen test, or looking for specifically known vulnerable versions and then practicing knowing that there's a vulnerability there. So there's um, web applications out there that are intentionally vulnerable to known issues so that you can practice those skills. And that is a really important thing to highlight in a CV or in an interview is you've been practicing those skills and you can demonstrate them. Whilst sometimes it can be difficult to know when to bring these things up and it might there might be some things that you want to mention but they don't fit well in a CV and maybe you've decided not to send a cover letter. Um, there's still times in which you can bring it up that it's going to fit nicely, that it's worth highlighting the ways in which you've been learning. So for example, on an interview for a, a pen testing position, they're very likely to ask you about your experiences with specific vulnerabilities, either asking about something that you've exploited recently or being quite specific in terms of, you know, um, please explain cross-site scripting to me, for example, and being able to lean on actual experience that you've had of discovering and exploiting those vulnerabilities, even if it wasn't on a pen test, but it was just something that you've done in independent learning, is definitely going to help you. So you'll struggle for professional experience, certainly, but that doesn't mean that positions that you might have held previously, software development, network engineering, IT help desk, aren't worth highlighting as having um, skills that are cross-functional that will benefit you in a pen testing role, but also just practicing in your own time, practicing on vulnerable virtual machines, those things are worth mentioning too and worth highlighting. I mentioned certifications very briefly a second ago as well. And uh, I want to say that some companies, again, have strict requirements around certifications and they'll list on their job descriptions, you must have a certain certification. And if you have the disposable income to get those certifications, then great, do them. Um, many of them have benefits aside from just the, the certification that you can add to your CV, like giving you a, a structured methodology for your learning, following through a certain syllabus, and that's awesome. But if you can't afford those certifications, because many of them are frankly very expensive, then uh, don't be put off by that. It is still worth mentioning, uh, it's still worth looking at certifications, because many of these certifications list their syllabus and list the content that they'll go through within the training material, or the level of knowledge that they would expect somebody taking the exam to have. And taking that information and, and using it to augment your own independent learning is going to help you. Even if you can't take a certain exam because you can't afford it, being able in an interview to talk about aspects of the syllabus that you have covered, or even just directly saying that you've been following through training material of that type, is going to help the hiring manager in understanding the level of experience that you've got and grading you. Because that is one of the things with uh, hiring pen testers, very often there's a lot of people competing for uh, just one position, so differentiating yourself in that way is going to help. Um, and also, if you don't have professional experience, if you're looking for an entry-level position, it's just another way of talking about your experience and how you've approached the topic. So certifications and exams are great if you can afford them, if you can get them, but if you can't, don't think that it's a requirement because there's a lot of companies out there who uh, will assess candidates in a different way.
Some companies, for example, will have a technical assessment as part of their uh, entry requirements. Some of these are good and some of them are bad. I'm sure people have seen the problems with uh, software development roles and, and uh, whiteboarding exercises during interviews. If you haven't, it's worth taking a look at for just awful ways of interviewing candidates. But you might be expected to perform some kind of technical assessment during a uh, interview. That could be very generic and just demonstrating an experience with some of the underlying technologies, questions around things like operating systems, Windows knowledge, Linux knowledge, or it might be something really specific. Like for example, here is a vulnerable web application. Please demonstrate your knowledge of the pen testing methodology. Follow through the stages that you would as if this was an actual pen test or something really niche like, this page is vulnerable to SQL injection. Please demonstrate how you would discover and exploit this vulnerability. Technical assessments are common, and um, if they're put together well, they can actually be a really good way of grading a candidate if a candidate doesn't have professional experience, if the role really just cares about practical capability. So it's worth preparing for those as well, and there's a lot of capture the flag events and vulnerable virtual machines that will prepare you for those. It's also worth, at the early stages of the interview process, asking about what the process is. Is it just going to be interviews? Is there going to be a panel? Is there going to be a technical assessment? Because the earlier you find out about that kind of thing, the better you can prepare for it. And then the final thing is the difference between foundation knowledge and tools. Um, it's good to know about tools, especially depending on the specific area of pen testing you're looking at. If you're looking at infrastructure security, then knowing about Metasploit and Bloodhound and the different kinds of options that those tools have is good for web applications. Knowing about the Z-Attack proxy or Burp Suite, something like that is good. But understanding the fundamentals beneath the tools is going to be better. Not just saying that you can run this tool and exploit this vulnerability, but demonstrating that you understand what caused the vulnerability, what makes the system vulnerable and how the exploit actually works. That's going to show a much deeper uh, knowledge and a much deeper understanding. And of course, don't just focus on the hacking side of things. As a pen tester, yes, we have to find and exploit vulnerabilities, but you also need to know how to remediate those and how to explain to the client or the customer what the fix should be and sometimes what the options are around remediation. So yes, getting, getting your hands on tools uh, is really useful, certainly for those very common tools that we're going to use all the time, but don't focus just on tool use. Focus a little bit more on those uh, fundamental skills and the fundamental knowledge of how vulnerabilities come about and effectively how they work. And finally, just good luck. Honestly, pen testing, I think, is one of the coolest jobs there are out there, and it's a better time than it ever has been to get into pen testing, given that there's so many different routes in now, from degrees to boot camps to just independent learning. So good luck.